Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to take a Raspberry Pi camera and add it to my Raspberry Pi Zero W control robot, which is based on the DF Robot Devastator Robot platform. Now, I have to admit, as I shoot the start of this video, I don't really know what I'm going to do in terms of the specific hardware or software, so this is going to be one of those iterative videos that I make up as I go along. So, here we have our robot in exactly the same state it was in at the end of its last video, a Raspberry Pi Devastator robot number two, when you may remember it was uh, clambering around outside over stones and things at the end of the video. Very exciting, but uh, it couldn't see, it hasn't got a camera. And in this video, I want to add to it a, a Raspberry Pi camera. So here we've got the, uh, the Raspberry Pi camera. And you might remember I last used this in my Raspberry Pi Motion I OS video. It's still mounted in that mount, which uh, I got when I bought it from a Pi Moroni. And the one thing we'll have to do is to replace the camera cable. This is the cable used to connect to a standard Pi, but the robot is controlled by Raspberry Pi Zero, so you have to use a different camera cable, which will be the same connector at that end, but it's got a smaller connector at the Pi end. So that's the camera we're going to be using. And the challenge we've got is twofold. Firstly, we've got to find a way of mounting this somewhere on the robot so it can be controlled by, by the Pi, and the, the robot is made of a metal and the top comes off, but it comes off in such a way it'd be rather difficult to have the Pi, I think, inside and the camera on the outside and sort of get the, the cable through. And we also got a challenge of figuring out what to do with software in terms of how we're going to either stream uh, a feed from the camera or record on it or, or stuff like that. But let's think about the, the hardware side first. Let's uh, first of all take the cover off the top of the robot. And uh, there we are, Mr. Screwdriver has done his stuff, so hopefully we can take the top off. We remember how all the wires fit, oh, it goes that way, doesn't it? There we are. And um, you can see inside here, we have uh, got our uh, Raspberry Pi Zero. The Raspberry Pi Zero is sitting here. And uh, there's the uh, motor controller, obviously the motors, there's, there's the battery pack back here, which powers everything through the, the motor control. The Pi is powered through that. And this is mounted in a, a little mount where Access to the camera connector looks uh, rather restricted, I think. So I think what I'm going to have to do is to actually find a way to take the Raspberry Pi out of this little case that's nicely secured, nice and neatly down here, and probably mount it on the top of the robot with the, uh, the camera as well, and then we'll just run wires down through the top of the robot to the motor controller and to get power and, and run that sort of stuff. And I think the way I'm going to do that is to design some sort of 3D printed mount which we can put on the on, on the top of the robot. You might remember I did a bit of 3D printing using the service of 3D hubs a few videos back. It worked very well. So I'm going to try and design something for that. So I'm going to get on with that and I'll come back to you when I've made some progress on the physical hardware side. Well, here I am back again, about two weeks later for me, just a few moments later for you. Oh, the wonders of a time flying by in filmmaking. And uh, as you can see, the Raspberry Pi has now disappeared from inside the robot. Took me ages to get this uh, little mount out, this case out, because it was screwed up to the bottom of this plate. To get to that plate, I had to get to the screws, they're under the motors, I had to take the sides off. Anyway, that's all done. And uh, I've been tinkering around in Tinkercad to build a bracket which will hold the Raspberry Pi Zero and the camera on the top of the robot. And then I exported my design to an STL file, uploaded it to 3D Hubs, as you see here, the online 3D printing service. And then just under 48 hours after I uploaded to 3D Hubs, I got this handed to me by the postman. Well, okay, he actually handed me a box with this inside, but you know what I mean. I got it printed online, and here's the, the physical object, an amazing process to go through that. Uh, this is basically going to have the Pi sitting on top here. The camera will uh, go on the front, pointing out through that hole. This is printed in black because I thought it would match the robot, but it's not great to show you on camera, is it? And, uh, and it's got holes as well to uh, mount on top of the robot and to allow, allow wires through and, and things like that. So what I need to do now is to mount the camera onto this bracket. And uh, here we are. It's now all held in place with four little nuts and bolts, and it's looking out through the right hole at the front. All the holes seem to be in the right place in this design, which is always a relief when you get things printed and finding out if they fit or not. And the, the camera is connected to the correct ribbon cable. This is the, the Raspberry Pi Zero ribbon cable, and it's connected to the Raspberry Pi Zero. And you see the way I've designed this is so the ribbon cable will nicely sort of fold underneath, and the Pi will drop into place on these two little uh, sort of pins I've left on the design, 
deliberately designed to be a bit loose, but they'll hold in place so you can put the pie in place very easily. And then on the back of this design, there'll be a couple of uh, nuts and bolts going in here, bolts dropping in there, and of course there'll be some nuts on the bottom of that to hold that in place. So I'll put those uh, in place now to hold it all securely together. And uh, here we are, here's the uh, finished assembly. The pie is now some securely mounted as well as the camera. I didn't quite leave myself enough uh, length on the threads under here, but they do hold in place, that's, that's fine. And if you're thinking, this won't be flush, Chris, it won't fit on the top of the robot, it will, because there's a hole here on the robot, I've accounted for that, so this drops on top and it's uh, beautifully flush on the surface. And if I can find the holes, which are there in theory, bolts will drop through. Let's just drop them in to prove the principle. One, two, three and four. There you are, counting prices as well, and that will mount on top of the robot very nicely. So if I now just go and put the nuts on the bottom of the bolts here, get it all screwed together nicely and solidly in place, as you can see here, it is now all finished off, back in one piece. I've wired it in, I've put in place a little lead that goes to the dongle, which allows me to control this via the, the Rai i8 keyboard. And uh, yes, I could control this by a Bluetooth keyboard, actually, but I haven't got a Bluetooth keyboard around. I'm going to use this dongle at the moment. That's why there's little pillars here to actually allow that to hold in place. That works pretty well. Yes, also, this is an exposed design. So some of you are thinking that's a bit uh, open. It is. I did initially design the top bracket here, which was uh, all closed in a two-part uh, thing. And I thought, well, I want to be able to get at the micro SD card and that socket and probably the HDMI as well to plug in a monitor sometimes when I'm developing things here. And it just seemed easier, at least for now, to have the pie exposed on the top of the robot. But as you can see, the main thing is the first quest of this video has been achieved. The robot is back together with its camera securely mounted on the top. And it even works. If I go to the controller, yes, it'll spin around. And I think we'll, uh, I think we'll stop that there. I don't want to risk uh, driving it on this surface, driving it off the table. It's a bit skiddy on this surface. And if you're wondering, I have shared the, uh, the CAD here. I did the work for this bracket deliberately in Tinkercad, so you could go and get a free Tinkercad account and go and get hold of that file, adapt it if you want. And I've also shared this on the Thingiverse if you want to get to the SDL file and get one printed out yourself. Anyway, the main thing now is to make sure that this camera is not just an ornament. So I need to now go and change some of the code on the Pi and make the camera do something useful. So, here I am back again with a robot hooked up to a, a monitor and keyboard and a mouse and things, and I'm going to write some code. And what I want to do is to get to a point where I can take the robot's controller, take it outside and use this to drive the robot around and have keys here where I can start and stop video recording. I actually want to record the end of this video using this robot. And to do that, we need to add some code into the Python code that controls the robot. So here I've got a piece of code to just show you initially the principle. So in this piece of code, we're simply importing the Pi camera module. We're also importing the time module. We're setting the camera up to record at 720p, 25 frames a second. We're waiting a second for things to settle down, and then we're recording um, a file. So we're going to start recording using the command here, camera start recording, record to the videos directly on the Pi, uh, a file called vidtest.jpg. It's worth pointing out that will save a motion JPEG file. You could use .h264, which would obviously save an h264 file, but I found for video editing later, it's better to record um, JPEG files. It'll then uh, wait five seconds, and then it'll stop recording. And it's going to be recording this, as you can see, to the videos directory, which is sitting over here, currently empty. So if we uh, run this uh, thing, and I'll uh, wave my hand in front of the robot while this is going on, so we've got something exciting in our video. Has it finished yet? It's getting there, and um, must almost be time. And yes, it's finished off there now. And if we go back to over here, you'll see, oh, we've got a file now called vidtest and jpeg. If I actually clicked on that, it'll open up in an image editor on Raspbian. But if we go over to uh, a terminal, I've got OMX player set up to play that very file. I'm all prepared for once. I press enter. Hopefully, it'll play the file. We'll probably miss the very start. But oh, there we are, look. I'm waving in front of the camera, we've proved a principle. It's a little bit blurry because the Pi's camera is it's fixed focus, it's set on a longer distance. Anyway, that gives us the principle of how we're going to record video, but of course that code always saves to the same file name, and that's not a very smart thing to do. So over here I've got another piece of code showing you a principle where I'm importing the date time function, and here I'm also defining moment in, in, when we're going to record video to be the current date time. And then the file name here, therefore, I'm actually pulling in some variables where you see the percentage signs here and the um, 
0, 2D gives us two decimal places, and we're pulling in uh, as part of the file name moment.hour, uh, moment.minute, uh, and you can guess what's on the end, moment.second. So that'll give us a file name based on the Pi's time. It's worth remembering the Pi does not have a battery back clock, so its time is going to be reset every time it's rebooted, but at least it'll give us unique files during a boot. So I'll just run this just to prove the principle again. We'll run that module and uh, it'll come up. I'll maybe uh, wave my hands in front of the robot again, give me lots more exciting exercise until it's finished. And uh, come on robot, finish off. There we are, it's finished. And if we look back again into the uh, folder then you'll see, find the right one. It's uh, yes, we've now got a file called 223455 and um, so, we can take all that principle, put it into our robot control code. This code you've seen before, if you've seen this, this series, and of course you can get this from the robot's uh, web page, link in the video description. And basically all I've done here is to add up the stuff to import Pi camera and date time, set up the camera, um, and also I'm setting up a, a variable called record, which will keep track of whether recording or not to deal with debouncing the, the keyboard. So if we then go down here, we have our code which uh, actually allows us to control the robot from the keyboard, uses something called curses, is this the best thing to do? I'm increasingly thinking, no, it isn't, but I'll address this in the fourth part of this video series. So for now, I've just added in two bits of blocks of code here, um, and they basically, the first one is saying if we see an R key pressed, and if record is zero, if it's not recording, it then sets record to one, uh, gets the, the current uh, date and time, and then uh, starts to record the file to the same uh, file as we saw previously. And also it turns off one of the Pi's front indicators so we can tell recording has started. It's also looking in this code for T, which is going to be terminate recording. And it says if it is recording and it sees that, it'll set record to zero, turn off the indicator, stop recording. And just to be certain in the finally bit of code here that always gets executed, I've got to stop recording there, which you probably won't be happy about if it has stopped recording, but it means if I don't stop recording, it shouldn't have an open file. Anyway, that's all basically set up. So what I'm now going to do is to take the robot out into the real world somewhere with lots of uh, trees and grass and things like that and do some exciting video recording. Greetings. Here we've got an extra video segment because sadly I've experienced a bit of a problem. And the problem is that the power I'm using to run this robot, the six AA batteries, which worked perfectly well till I added the camera, do not work when the Pi turns its camera on. As soon as it turns its camera on and then you turn the motors on, there isn't quite enough power and this thing can crash. Not all the time, but now and then you go and turn on a motor and uh, the thing crashes. Took me a while to figure out what was going on. So I wanted to let you know I have fixed this temporarily for this video by putting a power bank into the back of the robot. You can probably see it sticking out there. I'll give you, give you a shot of that. It's not a very neat, but it does work. It means now the Pi is powered from the, uh, the, the battery bank here, the USB power bank, and the AA batteries just control the motors. So I thought you would notice that in the next segment. I was not explain what was going on. Um, things don't always work as intended. As I said at the start of this video, I'm making this up as I go along, but I think we now are working. So I'm now going to take the Pi out to test it in the wild. So, here we are outside in the big wide world, and as the old saying goes, I've brought my robot to the park. And I've done it on a rather windy day, so apologies for all the bluster you'll probably hear on the audio. But as you can see, the robot's all raring to go, so in theory I can press the R key, and uh, yes, it should have started recording now, so in theory I can cut to the shot from the robot. Hopefully you can see me, I'll give you a wave, hello people if you can see me there. And in theory I can drive the robot forward. Oh, it's coming towards us. Look, that's good, isn't it? And uh, let's take it back uh, around like that. And hopefully you're seeing some exciting footage. And uh, maybe we can make it uh, spin around. You can have a look over there. And maybe have a look um, over that way as well. Maybe drive a bit forwards that way. You're having a jolly good look around. I, of course, can't see these pictures. This is very weird. I'm doing this blind. Let's see if I can uh, stop the robot and uh, bring it back towards me again. Can you see me vaguely now? Maybe you can. Let's, uh, come forward, and uh, maybe from here let's transition to another location. And uh, here we are somewhere else. The robot is uh, trying to get through the undergrowth. If I can make it come along, there we are. And, uh, oh, I must improve the uh, control system on this in my next video, but it's coming along. You can probably see the camera here. Let's, uh, let's head down this way. Can we get through that? Can you get through that, robot? 
No, you can't. Oh, maybe. You're probably getting some interesting footage there as the robot tries to uh, free itself. Oh, it's gone out now. There we are. Don't know what the camera footage was like on that, but uh, let's, let's go the other way. Let's go all the way around. This is, of course, not stabilised this footage, is it? But never mind. Let's try going that way. Uh, aren't these amazing pictures recorded from a Raspberry Pi Zero Devastator robot? So, here we are at the end of another Raspberry Pi Devastator robot video. And despite the problems I had with powering the thing, I'd be very pleased with the results I've obtained from the camera. In the next of these videos, I'm going to revisit my keyboard control system and also implement speed control. But now that's it for this time. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.